Good evening, everyone. I'm Carol Olson Day of the New York Times, and I am so excited to welcome you to this Times Talks. We're live here in New York at the Times Center, and we're live around the world on the web. And tonight, we are thrilled to have as our guests two of today's most compelling collaborators in film. One is an international award-winning director and writer with a distinguished body of work that has won him worldwide critical acclaim and a reputation as the very best in his craft. His industry has awarded him some of its highest honors, including the Cannes Film Festival Lifetime Achievement Award. Our other guest is a celebrated actor who's undeniably one of the most popular performers of today's film industry. I know you know his movies. <laughs> and tonight we're going to hear about something new. Our two guests' compelling film, Cosmopolis, which was an official selection at the Cannes Film Festival this year and which opens in New York this Friday, August 17th. You'll hear much more about them and about Cosmopolis from our interviewer. Every Monday, his New York Times media equation column is must reading for everyone concerned with how media intersects with society, culture, and business. He also writes extensively about film, television, and books for the arts section of the Times. And he's the author of the amazingly honest and fascinating memoir, The Night of the Gun. So please join me in welcoming New York Times media columnist, David Carr, and our very special guests, David Cronenberg and Robert Pattinson. <laughs> Well, David, you've been making movies since, what, 1975, and listen to your demographic. <laughs> it's incredible. I know, it's a thank you Just all. Just a I tribute to <laughs> years. <laughs> all those years of filmmaking finally, finally paying paid off. off. They're treating. <laughs> you have to get to be almost 70 before it works. <laughs> You started making movies when there were the Beatles, and now they're treating you like the Beatles. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I Who's have your a little friend, help anyway. my friend, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm thrilled to have you both here. Um, I guess that's widely shared in this audience. I noticed when we walked in. Um, the movie is... I couldn't tell if it was modern or if it was like where exactly we were, because all of it seemed to be happening like yesterday in my newspaper. I don't know how you did that. Yeah, well, it wasn't me. It was the writer Don DeLillo, you know? He wrote the, the, the book uh, about 12 years ago. And at the time, uh, I think there was a, one review in particular when the book came out uh, that said, this, this, these scenes in the book of, of uh, people protesting on Wall Street and protesting uh, the New York Stock Exchange and capitalism are totally unconvincing. So far That could fetched. never happen. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then, so now when we're shooting the movie, Occupy Wall Street is happening. We're shooting scenes of exactly that in the movie. Uh, we have a scene where Rob's character gets a pie in the face from an anti-capitalist, you know, sort of stalker. And then two days later, Rupert Murdoch gets a pie in the face. So it, it was bizarre, you know. It was and more, more darkly, um, assassination as a route to fame is very much. Well, that, and that's been around for a new, long time. The new sex tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you could combine the sex tape with the assassination, <laughs> there you've got something. 
I think it's I think it's been done. I think it's called a snuff film, right? <laughs> well, the the, the you Wait, know, they, that was I crash. remember when people Sorry. were trying to find those and they never could quite find. I think you have to make it yourself. So how how did you crazy kids get together? <laughs> Dating service. <laughs> Brought to you by Match.com. <laughs> how, did, how did the conversation begin? Uh, I, I, um, I, was, I, I, got, I got an offer for, for the movie out of nowhere, and I was like three weeks, there's three weeks left of shooting the last Twilight movie. That was that movie about vampires, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kidding! <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, I read it and I kind of loved it, and then uh, uh, then I suddenly realized afterwards what the implication of getting an offer for a movie was, where you actually had to do it afterwards, and uh, it th- terrified me. And I couldn't even, you know, because actors, you spend pretty much your entire career bullshitting directors or bullshitting everybody right. to make out that you know what you're talking about and you know right. what you're doing when you know nothing. <laughs> like, and, uh, uh, I knew David had done the script, and I knew about his work and kind of how he was as a person. I knew I couldn't really bullshit him, so uh, I was terrified of even making the phone call saying yes or no. So I basically called him up and said, "I don't know what it's about. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why you offered it to me." But, I mean, it was just like, Way to sell! <laughs> yeah, no. And I, I bet said, your agent loved that. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, "You're the man I want." <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Now, receptive audience. <laughs> in return to getting a yes out of him, it, it, it looked like you locked him in a car for about, I don't know, a month or so. <laughs> I think uh, there are a lot of people in this audience who wouldn't mind doing that. <laughs> I got their first story. <laughs> um, but of course, it wasn't a real car. It was a kind of Lego modular, 24 pieces come apart. You can split it sideways and lengthwise, and the top comes off. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, that aspect of it was a lot of fun. And I really liked... Well, shooting it, but, I mean, you're trapped in that seat. Yeah, but, I mean, eventually you kind of... The other thing, I think James Gandolfini was saying, like, uh, if he would try and make everything, every scene, try and figure out a way to sit down. And it, like, it's, it's a really good tip as an actor. Everything becomes easier uh, as soon as you sit down in a seat. Like, you know, you should figure out every single bit of blocking just, just to have a seat in it. And if not a seat, a bed is even better. <laughs> uh, and, uh, <laughs> like, uh, uh, Those are words to live by. <laughs> yeah. So, you should in see fact, his horizontal work. <laughs> um, the, um, um, you, you actually were kind of slouched down a little bit in that limo. You know what? We usually save the clip, uh, the trailer for the end, but I want, there's a mood thing and a visual thing going on with this movie that I, and, and it's out Friday, right? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> You're in outer space, I gotta You're tell film, you. You're film professionals here. You're <laughs> professional moderator. I'm asserting that it's out Friday in New York. Thank you. Thank you. There's a mood thing and there's a look thing, like there is to all of David's film. And I just thought if we ran the trailer at the top, we'd be able to put that across without me trying to do a heck of a lot of explaining. So can we run that trailer? Like, it, it, the movie's nothing like that, really. <laughs> but it does look that good. is trailer magic. Yeah, it, it looks that, good. The movie is really just about a guy going across town to get his hair cut, right? That's right. right. I don't know what all that stuff Basically, is. Basically, right? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it is. That's, yeah. He sets out, and he says, I want a haircut. Yeah. He that doesn't really look like home. he needs one, but he... Well, <laughs> no, but in fact... Yeah, in the movie, he actually doesn't need one, and you find out why he needs to get, go to that barber shop. It's not really the haircut that's the matter. But we don't want to spoil the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what just, just so I don't maul this too much, what would you say he's doing besides going to get a haircut? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, a lot of things happen on the way. Right. And he meets a lot of people on the way. <laughs> and a lot of events happen to en route. Now, are we going to talk about it like everybody's seen the movie? We don't want to spoil I, it. I think we should do like little semi-spoilers uh, along the way. Um, he's, l let's just explain. This guy is an unconscionably wealthy person at a very young age, yeah. 28 years old, and he manipulates cyber capital, as you say, yeah. at, the, at sort of the role of a fingertip, and has a, a rather, he has a skill with money, but not, not a significant attachment to it. He seems sort of happiest when he's losing it. Yes, yes. 